Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Collinwood for YouTube. Resident under slash of under slash Collinwood for BitChute. And I'm here to do a Dark Shadows revival video. Sort of like a what if. What if there would have been a season two of the revival? What could that have been from my perspective? You know, I keep thinking about the end of the revival. And, you know, the one thing they could have did so easily is obviously pick back up it from this is Victoria Winters, who was played by Joanna Goings, you know, she comes back from the past, you know, from Barnabas's original, from Barnabas's time. And what we learn is that her trip is different than what, Alexander Isles' Victoria Winters did take. Joanna Goings' Victoria Winters actually finds out two things. Number one, she finds out, yes, she is the reincarnation of Josette. Number two, she finds out Barnabas is a vampire. So when she comes back, her and Ben Cross had amazing chemistry together. They were really, really great together. And they... You can tell right away when she looks at him, Barnabas knows she knows. You know, there's no words needed. When you when you know your secrets found out that there's a look of there's so much you know, she's afraid, but she's in disbelief too. And here's the thing. Barnabas is afraid too, because he's not just afraid of his secret being exposed. He's afraid because he doesn't know what what to do now. And that's always something I took away from that, you know, ending of what was Ben Cross's Barnabas going to do? I mean, because everybody, anybody that had come close to find out other than Dr. Hoffman had been 86. <laughs> um, so, so when you look at that, I go, to me, what they would could have done with this for if for a season two is play off part of that dynamic that yes, you have Barnabas contending of the contending with what to do and what should he do, and he even says, "Should I just kill her?" <laughs> you know, I don't want to, and that's where you, really you can't do this. You can't just kill her because she knows it ain't right. You know, and you could have had what I would have had would have had Joanna Goings show up at the old house, and she she's just go ahead. You know you. Te, I know you're the vampire. You know that you could have had that confrontation. You know in the frame of a season, you could have had that, but I think also too something you. Could, they could have easily had we know angelique was body jumping you know she was in dr hoffman's body she was in then she jumped into maggie's body and maggie is a medium and i think the the one person who could have been who they would have put as a heroine in this story could have easily been roger because I do believe Roger wasn't just, you know, yes, he was having sex with her, but there was something there, too. There was general feeling between the two, and you could sense that between the chemistry. So I think Roger would have sought after Maggie, of, like, I think you, you definitely could have had where Roger's trying to kiss her, and he smacks her, you know, or she, sorry, she smacks him, and he's like, what are you doing? Like, he doesn't understand why. And she, he gets the distinction. It, it's not her. There's just something off. And so you could have had him consulting the occult. And I think my girlfriend's possessed. And him sort of be the Maggie's heroine. You could have had that as a potential storyline in a series. All the while, a reveal I definitely would have been had and they, they lay the, the foundation for this in season one is Laura. They do lay a little bit of foundation enough where Laura could have been a presence for a season two where Laura comes back 
as the phoenix, as a woman who maybe was in a mental institution and she, maybe she burned it down. <laughs> they could have had something like this. Who would I have casted to play Laura? Wow. 90s. I think I would have definitely... I would have loved to see Gillian Anderson as the Phoenix, as Laura Collins, especially in the 90s arc. I know that's it would have been pre-X-Files, too, so it would have been interesting to see if she would have took on that role. Um, I'm not saying she would have. I'm just saying that would have been somebody I would have loved to see as Laura Collins. And another thing, though Vicky is dealing with being Josette and struggling with Barnabas' secret, whether they expose it or not, She's also dealing with David and David's mother being back in his life and having she's having several conflictions now. Here's this woman who knows she's as part as a, she's as much part of this family through Josette as much as Barnabas is. So she feels like she should not just protect this protect David but protect his family from all sorts of harm and she's trying to really determine you know, is Barnabas a legitimate threat to his own family, or is he just somebody who's misunderstood? You could have definitely had that emotion, you know, in this, in this, se in a season two. And what would have been my cliff? What would have been my conclusion for season two? The tease of Quentin Collins' arrival. They have the West Wind shut off for a reason. Everybody has a black sheep in the family, right? And you think. Well, Barnabas is the black sheep. No, 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 no. Quentin is the black sheep in the family. The West Wing was sealed off so no one would go in Quentin's room. Sort of, but here's the twist. The only reason they know about Quentin is because as they're looking through the family history, his picture is removed. And he's the only one whose picture is removed, and they talk, and that's where Vicky and David talk about talk about it to Elizabeth. We didn't, and she goes, "We don't mention that name in this house. We just we just don't. Well, why? We just don't, Vicky. Please drop it. And that's something you could have had." And David goes, "I know where his room is. What do you mean?" He goes, "I've been, I've been there. I've seen his portrait." where in the west wing and that's where vicky shows dave uh, david shows vicky quentin's room and we we don't hear the theme right away the first thing we see is the is them looking up at the portrait we don't see it they see it is this him and david goes yeah that's him that's quentin what happened to him i don't know i don't know what happened to him you know, he just disappeared, they said. And so what What did he supposedly do? Do you even know that? And she goes, no, I don't understand why, why the family doesn't talk about him. And, you know, every... When I think of Black Sheep, they, Quentin Collins would be the wild child in a grown man's body. He was the ultimate wild child of the Collins family. He was into the occult. He was obsessed with it, right? Just sort of like the series, but here's the thing. He was so obsessed with it. He became a werewolf because he became obsessed with sort of Darwinism in a way where he believed men were descended from wolves, were descended from their, not, not you know, monkeys or gorillas or whatever, that men were descended from animals. And he sort of invoked black magic on himself to turn himself into a werewolf. You know, not knowing the full adverse effect of that. So him toying with that made him a black sheep in the family. And that's the reason. Now, who would that portrait be? When I think of Wild Child in the 90s, when I think of somebody who I'd want to play Quentin to embody that, there's only one name I would have. And that would be... Again, in the 90s, at this time, at, well, in the 90s at that time, Rowdy Roddy Piper, there would be no one better to play Quentin Collins than him. I could see the interaction between him and Ben Cross. It would have been amazing. And my tease for Quentin's arrival for season three would have been, the, as they're leaving, they're going on the West Wing, we hear, 
faintly the mute quietens theme. And I would have loved to hear what Bob Covert would have come up with for sort of a new adaptation for Quentin's theme. I think it would have been amazing. So I think there's so many variables they could have had for a season two. And it could have led to a season three even. Again, I don't know how many seasons of the revival there would have been. I know there was only one, and that's a shame. But I do think there was good source material they could have used to bring back a season two and i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know who you would have play laura and quentin <laughs> you heard my pick um just he would have fit that so easily anybody who's watched they live and just watched hot rod in the rain again he wouldn't have been playing his wrestling character he would have been playing Here's this man who literally became obsessed with the cult. Now, where would I have explained Quentin been in season three? Season three would would start off with ladies and gentlemen, and it would be Quentin Collins has sort of lost his memory of what he did or how he did it. He doesn't know who he is. And you would have him in this traveling circus in the freak show as a werewolf. And he's sort of threatening to kill the rain master. They have the pentagrams protecting themselves. And he's threatening to kill the rain master all the time. He, uh, he tells him, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to get out of here. And the, the rain master sort of, uh, yeah, not on your life. So I think that's something you could have set up for a dynamic. And they would have obviously toured in Europe. They would have toured in Germany. And that's why no one knows where he is or has heard of him. He's just this freak show attraction that everyone just passes off as an act. And they don't know his name. So that would be my thing. Again, that would be something I would have loved to see. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know who you would look have cast in the 90s to play Quentin to play Laura I'd love to hear from you guys you guys have a happy Thanksgiving I'll see you